Now, the United States and its NATO allies have stated publicly that they are providing Ukraine with satellite images, they're intercepting Russian communications and helping to defend the country from Russian cyber attacks. But leaks and statements from within the US Intelligence Committee, are now a community, are now claiming even closer involvement, like with the sinking of the Russian missile cruiser Moskva. The ship was struck by Ukrainian missiles, but there are reports the US provided information about its location. And this month, the New York Times reported that the US had provided intelligence that helped Ukraine kill several Russian generals on the front line. Well, let's explore this with Dmitry Alperovich, who's a cyber policy and security expert at the Silverado Policy Accelerator in Washington, D.C. Uh, welcome to DW. So what sort of role is Western intelligence playing in this war? Well, this assistance right now is very crucial. In fact, as we're speaking right now, there is a Boeing E3A Sentry aircraft, an AWACS airborne warning aircraft that is flying in Romania, a NATO aircraft from a German airbase, watching what is going on in Ukraine on the battlefield, collecting signals intelligence, and uh, likely providing that uh, in close to real time to Ukrainian troops. So being able to provide targeting information to Ukrainians about the position of Russian troops, providing information, um, as has been reported, about the Moskva cruiser. Um, without that, the Ukrainians would be in a much, much harder fight. OK, so clearly this is important. Um, is there any danger of uh, perhaps um, the, the Russian military uh, taking, um, taking aim at some of these, uh, these uh, reconnaissance uh, flights and perhaps uh, bring them down? Is there, is there a danger that, that the West might become uh, dragged into this in some way? I don't think so, as long as they stay out of Ukraine itself. So they're flying in NATO countries, in Slovakia, in Poland, in Romania, uh, watching what's going on from afar. The Russians aren't going to take the step to escalate it uh, with NATO, the fight with NATO, because they know they, they're not capable of, of executing that fight. They're having a hard time, as it is, fighting Ukraine by itself. So as long as NATO stays out of Ukraine, I think they're fairly safe. And we hear from intelligence chiefs uh, that, that intelligence is being passed on at an unprecedented rate and scale. And why is that? Well, clearly, the United States and our NATO and European allies want Russia to be defeated in Ukraine. They want Ukraine to preserve its sovereignty, preserve as much territory as it can. And they know that without the intelligence help, certainly without the weapons assistance that it's been provided, Ukraine stands very little chance of doing so. So the uh, floodgates have opened uh, since February 24th, and more and more has been provided to Ukraine every day. Right. So, um, so long as these uh, reconnaissance flights uh, stay in NATO territory, they, they seem safe. Are there dangers, though, to providing uh, this sort of intelligence? Well, there's always a risk that the Russians will decide to escalate. But we're now in the third month of the war, and the Russians are clearly aware that this is going on. They're watching these um, aircraft uh, as, as anyone can um, uh, just go by going online. So they know that this information is being provided. Uh, but they haven't taken the steps to escalate, despite their rhetoric that they're not really fighting Ukraine, that they're fighting NATO. They have not taken any actions to uh, try to take kinetic actions against any uh, NATO party. And I think it's going to stay that way. OK, thanks for joining us. Uh, Dmitry uh, Alperovich from the Silverado Policy Accelerator. Thank you. The European Union is moving to confiscate and sell rather than simply freeze the assets of Russian oligarchs. The EU says that Russian assets worth 10 billion euros have already been frozen and they say the money gained by confiscating the assets could be used to help rebuild Ukraine. But some members of the European Union, including Germany, are skeptical. The villa of Russian oligarch Alisher Usmanov being seized by Italy's financial police on the island of Sardinia. Usmanov is a billionaire and close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin. He's only one of hundreds of oligarchs that the European Union has slapped with sanctions since Russia invaded Ukraine. At the moment, it's difficult to confiscate luxury assets like this in the EU. But the EU Commission, the EU's executive arm, wants to change that. Assets will be confiscated if a link to criminal activity can be proven. Under the proposed legislation, evading EU sanctions, for example by transferring assets to family members, could become illegal. But some say this won't hurt the Russian economy.
I think that this is done in more in symbolic, uh, with, a sim with a symbolic reason to try and explain that, you know, no, you will be seized if you are outside uh, your jurisdiction. The EU says that Russian assets worth 10 billion euros have been frozen in the bloc. Brussels wants to use this money to help to rebuild Ukraine. But that's easier said than done. In some countries like Germany, this would collide with private property laws. There are um, guarantees for uh, private assets uh, in our constitution, in our rule-based uh, order. And uh, we have uh, very, very uh, precise to consider uh, what we are doing when we um, um, abolish these uh, guarantees for um, uh, private uh, sector assets. If the law is passed, Russian oligarchs would have a much harder time getting their hands on their villas again. And here is a quick roundup of some more of the stories related to this war. Vladimir Putin has visited wounded soldiers at a military hospital in Moscow. The Kremlin released this footage, the first showing Putin with wounded troops since the war began. Western military analysts estimate that up to 15,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in the fighting. Representatives from Sweden and Finland have held high-level talks with Turkey. They want to convince Turkish President Erdogan to end his opposition to their NATO membership bids. Erdogan has accused Finland and Sweden of supporting groups that his government views to be terrorists.